Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Pastor Carvel is off doing a wedding in his family this weekend. So that's why he's not here. So he asked if we would, if I would help lead the singing this morning. So let's begin by singing the Eastern Gate. It will be on your screen. hymnal. It's called Satisfied.
323 at the cross. This one everybody knows, so sing out. I know. I didn't know that last one either, so I stumbled through it a little bit, but you did okay. <laughs>
Thank you, Linda. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Hummel's Church on uh, this fifth Sunday after Pentecost, July 13th, 2014. Uh, you know, I think I always run through these announcements a whole lot quicker than Carvel does, but uh, they really put it to me today because there's no insert in the bulletin. <laughs> so, here we go. Uh, what I have to hit on is Monday night prayer team meeting here at the church at 7 p.m. I have next Sunday the community service uh, in Middleburg in town. This service at 8:45, and then uh, those that'll be finished in time to go into Middleburg at uh, Charles Park, uh, just across from the Carnival grounds in Middleburg for a community service. And uh, I think we need to bring ourselves and bring lawn chairs uh, for that service. Um, also, I believe today is the last day for. Uh, to sign up for Hoagies for the youth group. They're at their retreat um, over this week. And uh, so sign up to support them and uh, fill your refrigerators. Yay! Announcements. Do you all have any announcements? Scott Johnson. Um, we had our first meeting of, I guess, what we're tentatively calling the uh, Men's Fellowship or Band of Brothers. Uh, we've decided we're going to meet uh, every first and third Tuesday here at the church at 6.30 for any men who are interested. It's open to men of all ages. Um, and uh, like I said, we're just looking for a time of fellowship to iron sharpening iron to grow in our faith and uh, into the men that God wants us to be. So first and third Tuesday of each month, 6.30. Thank you, Scott. Other announcements? <coughs> okay, if not... Um, Anniversary for this week, uh, Nathan and Kristen Snyder are celebrating an anniversary. And a, uh, a healthy dose of birthdays this week with Daisy Smith. Happy birthday on the 13th. That would be today. Happy birthday. Uh, Jason Rosencrantz and Scott Smith on the 16th. Claire Beaver, Laura Reich on the 17th. And Cheryl Brandt and Don Smith celebrating on the 19th. Happy birthday, everyone. Um, any first-time visitors here with us today before we keep moving? First-time visitors, fingers pointing. Oh, no. Your nephew? And your name? Brandon. Brandon, thanks for being with us today. We're glad to have you. Welcome, Brandon. Any other first-timers? Okay, if not, that is your quick version of the announcements. Go ahead and take uh, plenty of time and welcome each other this morning.
opening worship song this morning is As the Deer. And the words should be on our screen. Gracious Father, we just thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here this morning, for the health you give us, the desire, and uh, Lord, just the, again, the, the freedom to be in your house to worship. Lord, help us to be present here today, present not just in uh, body, but in mind, in our soul, in our heart, Lord, that um, we may just be here to uh, seek you. Lord, I pray that you'll uh, put a peace over Clint and bless his message, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will be present here today in a special way. And we just, uh, again, do all these, um, we ask all these things in your Son, Jesus' name, and it's through him we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's time for community prayer and uh, time of testimony, your joys, your concerns. Um, I believe there will be a... Kevin is... Uh, you work with both microphones, Kevin? That's going to be a tough duty. Your joys and concerns.
Oh, Joel, I thought you had one, Joel. You're just helping out. Gotcha. Uh, please continue prayers for my Aunt Rose Solomon, spelled like salmon. Uh, she, like I said, she's 92 years old in the nursing home, and she's just, uh, she's not doing well. She's shaky, and she fell, and she's having a lot of pain. Uh, also, pray for my daughter and her family. Uh, they're moving this weekend, and so I'm not going to be staying for Sun School because I'm helping move. And uh, they're moving to the island where in Seals Grove, where it also gets flooded. So I'm a little worried about them moving there. <laughs> so uh, please have a prayer for them and the grandkids. Thank you. I have a praise. Um, I've brought up Steve Savage a couple times, and he is walking again I mean with a walker but he's walking somewhat on his own now and he should be coming home in the next two weeks so from not walking at all no control over his lower half of the body now he's walking again so it's a praise thank you prayer for my wife Esther she's having head and neck problems prayers for Esther Thank you, Corinth. Uh, Helen Smith was lifted up in prayer a couple weeks ago. <coughs> or maybe last week. Um, it's a former worker of mine, too. Uh, she's going to have um, surgery on her valve in her heart on Tuesday. So she needs her prayers. Others? If not, let's enter into a uh, time of worship and uh, let's uh, pray how, however you feel uh, comfortable, standing up, sitting down at the rail, um, to yourselves or, or out loud, whichever way it may be. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, we'll close with the Lord's Prayer together. Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. If the ushers would come forward, we'll take your tithes and offerings. Responses we give thee but thine own. Dear God, please accept these gifts and our offerings and our tithes as just a small uh, token of give back to uh, all that you've done for us and all the blessings that you bestow on us. Uh, we pray that they'll be used in a way that's uh, pleasing to you and uh, promotes your, your kingdom and your ways. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there children's church today? Anybody have children's church? Okay. 
Um, if not, then I guess we'll uh, turn. Should we have the kids up for a second? I don't want them to be bored. This is off the cuff, so I might get myself in trouble. But why don't you come on up for a minute, kids? Gotta have something for you guys. You're too good looking to sit back there all service. I'll get you wound up for the Smiths for the rest of the time. Good morning. I got a question for you. You don't have to answer it if you're shy, but you can. It's an easy one. What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, we got more coming. Oh, okay. Come on. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? Well, let's start first. Do you want to grow up? <laughs> this means yes, and this means no. You want to grow up. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? A cop. A cop? You don't know yet? That's all right. You've got plenty of time. Are you afraid to talk in this thing? You don't know what you want to be? You know what you want to be when you grow up? No? No, oh, I've seen a pattern here. You know, I, there's a hand up. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, a horse farrier. A horse farrier? Wow, that's pretty impressive. You got it figured out already. Do you know what you want to be, Madison? No? Anybody else come up with any ideas while I'm walking around up here? What you want to be? Okay, well, you got plenty of time to figure it out, and sometimes I'm still trying to figure out what I want to be whenever I grow up. But do you believe this? I, uh, we had a, Beth and I had a lesson with the big kids last week, the ones that are at camp right now and, and are teenagers and probably the kids that you think are pretty cool now that I'm getting old. But, um, you know, our lesson with them was that God's still working on them. And I believe that God's still working on everybody in here. He just has a lot more time to, to deal with some of you guys. Do you believe that? God's still working on you? Yeah? Well, we talked about it, and uh, I sang them a silly song that I, I knew when I was a kid, and I'm not going to do that in front of all these uh, wonderful people. But it said, It took them just a week to make the moon and the stars and the sun and the earth and Mercury and Mars. But just think, He didn't make you just quite that fast. He's working on you. And, uh, you know, you've got a lot of neat things to look forward to. What are a couple things we can do to uh, make sure that we're ready for God to work on us? What are the types of things you can do to, to make sure that you hear God when He talks? Oh, this is, you guys are right like the teenagers. No, I got a volunteer. Uh, listen? Listen? Yeah. And how do we listen to God? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes we just be quiet, right? We like to talk, talk, talk all the time. Sometimes we just need to be quiet and listen. And can we talk to God? Okay. How can we do that? By reading the Bible. By reading the Bible. That's how we know His Word and how He might want us to. How He might want to work on us. How else can we talk directly to God? Praying. Praying. Absolutely. Yeah. Put our hands together and bow our heads and close our eyes and talk right to Him. That's pretty neat. What do you think, Smith girls? You just don't quite know what to think of me. I'm behaving myself. <laughs> I believe he's still working on us. He's working on all of us, and he's working on all of you. And uh, I appreciate a couple minutes with you here today to talk about it. So let's bow our heads, and then uh, you can go back to your moms and dads. Dear Lord, we just uh, thank you for the, the youth and... Uh, Lord, the example that, that some of them set in this church, but um, Lord, these children to, to follow after them and be the backbone of your church. Lord, I just pray that you'll bless them. Um, Lord, just uh, as always, help us pick one or two things out um, from each service, things that we can have with us and learn and, and have you work on us and, and do your will. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that's all. Thank you much.
time we'll turn it over to you, Clint, for the uh, message, and uh, you're just going to you'll close it out from there. Is that right? Okay. Good morning. Everything is very cut very short today. <laughs> Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come before this day that you set before us today, dear Lord. Lord, we pray that uh, you be with us, help us, and guide us, and direct us in every way. We thank you that we have this opportunity to be in the house of worship this morning, dear Lord, and learn more about your word. We pray, dear Lord, that you would uh, be with us and direct us in a way you want us to go from day to day. And we pray for those individuals, that, dear Lord, that, uh, that aren't here this morning, dear Lord, that you keep them safe wherever they may be. For Lord, we ask this all in your Son's name, Jesus. Amen. Why don't we stand while I read God's Word, if you're capable. Ephesians 4, chapter 4, we're starting with verse 17 through the end. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer work as the rest of the Gentiles walk, and purity in their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alternated by the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all cleansiness with greediness. But to you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and you have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in truth, righteousness, and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary efficacy, let it may impart grace to your hearers. And do not grief the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. You may be seated. My message is very short and everlasting. Forgive and forgiveness is the title of today's message. I'm doing this in love. I'm doing this in God's Word. The Holy Spirit laid this in my heart. Luke 6, 37. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall 
not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Luke 11, 4. And forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Luke 17, 3 and 4. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, revoke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to him, saying, I repent, thou forgive him. Luke 23, 34a. Then saith Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know what they do. 2 Corinthians 2.10 To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sake forgave it I in the person of Christ. Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. 2 Chronicles 7, 14a If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them of their sin. Psalms 86, 5 For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive an abundance in mercy to all those who are called upon you. Mark 11, 25 and 26. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God does not tempt us to do evil, but we are tempted of our own lust. However, God does not test us in order to give us opportunity to prove our faithfulness to Him. Forgive us of our debts refers to sins which are moral and spiritual debts to God's righteousness. The request for forgiveness of sin is made here by the believer. In order to be saved, one need not necessarily name all of his sins, but he must confess that he is a sinner. 1 John 1.9 This opens the door for his forgiving and cleansing light to purify our, our hearts. It's like our Lord's Prayer. How can we say it and not mean what we say? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And don't sway back and forth. You forgive and you forget and you let it go. We claim to be Christians then be one because the world is watching us. We must be true to our word, whatever it may be. Remember the first time when you asked God for forgiveness and you really meant what you said. Matthew 6, 12 And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Matthew 6, 14 and 15 For if ye forgiven men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Matthew 9, 6a But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. 
Matthew 18, 21, 22. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. That is a lot of forgiveness. And that's a long time. The contrast in the servant is unwilling to forgive his fellow servant as a debt. Just as an unbeliever as, the, as this action would be. That is how unbelievable it would be for a Christian who has been forgiven a lifetime of sin to be unforgiven to others. An unforgiven individual is a wicked individual. No true believer would do such. A truly saved individual would never behave like that. One behaving in this manner falls into condemnation of the lost. True forgiveness is from the heart and is one of the signs of a genuine salvation. Saved people are both forgiven and forgiving. Unforgiving people prove that they have never been born of God. Forgive them, Father, for they know what they do. Even Joseph forgave all of his brothers. For they put him in a well and forgot all about him. All those brothers that he had, and he forgave them all. When you forgive someone, you forget it. You let it go. You let it ride. You let it pass. You move on. You love one another. You help one another in need. When you have the true love of Christ in your heart, it's hard to keep it inside. When you're at your workplaces, when you're at home, when you're, no matter where you're at, you must share God's Word. The times are near. Every day it's getting closer with what's going on in the world today, with everything that's going on around us. I had the privilege three weeks ago on my sign out the end of the driveway again. The Holy Spirit, when He, when he talks to me, I, I just can't sit still. There's times when I try to ignore it and push it away thinking it's because of Clint and, and it just keeps working at me. God told me several months ago that I had to get my act together. He had a job for me. And every time he reminds me of that, I, I obey, try to obey and do what he tells me to do. Well, I put the sign out there. Be compassionate to one another. Forgive one another as God forgave you. I didn't more than have it on the sign. When I looked behind me, because I heard some hollering and screaming going on down the road. Here an individual had put some stuff on the top of his car. He put his kids in the car and strapped them in and he drove headed towards Middleburg. Everything that was on the, the roof of the car had blew off. His cell phone, envelopes, letters, whatever they may be. I went down after I was done with the sign there. I walked down and asked him if I could help him with something because there was a lot of language going on with him and his, I, I take it that his wife, it might have been his girlfriend. Stuff that I didn't appreciate to hear, but anyways it was going on. And, and the, what really stood out was, and this is the thanks I get. He had mentioned to his wife or girlfriend. Walked down to find out what was going on. I walked down below to help him out to find whatever he had lost. Through all this, he found the most important thing. It was a check. It was a large amount of check. He found it, and that's the only thing that was on his mind. When he found this, he happened to turn around and look at the sign that I had just got done putting up just a minute or two before that. He looked back to me, and he apologized to me for the foul language and the actions he had done. I know that it was the Holy Spirit telling me at that time I was supposed to put that on the sign. I hope and pray that he apologized to his wife. 
or his girlfriend, whatever it might have been. But when the Holy Spirit talks to you in your heart, with an open mind and an open heart, it's His will. It's Him using you to do the work of the Lord. And I pray that you would step up to be a part of that. I had asked some time ago about having a Sunday night service. God laid it on my heart. Clint, get your act together. I've got a job for you. I truly believe we need a revival in the church. We need to be a part of what we claim to be. Through all this, I hope you've been praying for it. I went to our pastor and I asked to be a part of the Sunday night service. I truly believe that God has a purpose for me. I have no idea where, I have no idea what, but I cannot sit in my pew anymore and be quiet. I must be a part of God's work. I also ask our pastor that I could be a part of visitation. I get more blessings out of going out into the community, the nursing homes, hospitals, shut-ins, even some of the congregation. I feel comfortable. I feel like I've been blessed every time I do that. I've never experienced that until I started going to the Bible studies with several individuals in the congregation. I believe there's a calling for every one of us. We can make a change in the community here in Homo's church if we just would do God's work. But first of all, we've got to learn to forgive and forget and love one another and help those ones in need. I started out saying the message was going to be very short. I was going to take and do something here early this morning, but I chose not to uh, because of the situation. Uh, I just pray that we could be all part of God's work. Did you ever watch ants work one behind another? You'll see hundreds of them going in a straight line doing their work. Some are going this way, they turn around and they come back. What do they think when they look up at us? They must see a very large foot looking down on them. What is God, when we look up to God, what do we see? He's looking at us all the time, every day. What's going on in the world today, overseas, here in our own country? It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. I pray that we'd all step up and be a part of something that's good. If it starts at Homeless Church, if it starts in the next county, if it starts at the other end of the country, that it's got to start someplace. And I'd like to be a part of whatever it may be. When we was in Florida, we went to a church down there. I asked God where he wants me to go to church. We went, I went past several churches before God directed me to go to the church that we attended. It was a small church, but it was a God-fearing church. I know God directed me there. When we went there the next Sunday, the pastor remembered our first and last names. Through all that, I felt very comfortable. So wherever God would direct me to go, if it be in Homos, if it be in Florida, if it be in Israel, if it, wherever it may be, I want to be a part of that. And I ask that you to keep me in prayer. 
that God would encourage me to be more than what I am. And I thank you all. Got this on the screen. Would you please stand? I told you it's up front, it was a very short message. But it was in forgiveness and forgiving. And it's everlasting. Long preserved for our walk in this world, they resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart words of life, words of hope, they give us strength. In this world, wherever we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let me. Father, we thank you that we had this opportunity to spread your word here this morning, dear Lord. We pray that the words that we put out here today, dear Lord, will go beyond these walls, dear Lord, and go out into the world, dear Lord, wherever we may be. For Lord, we just ask you to be with us, help us and guide us through the week, dear Lord, till we all meet again. For Lord, we leave this all in your Son's name. Amen. We are a mission here together to make disciples for Jesus Christ empowered by God's holy word and relying fully on God's word. We stand firm in our mission as a community of faith bound together in Christ to proclaim the love for all people.
Oh.